Dark Souls Remastered is known as the remastered version of the grandfather of all Souls-like games, Dark Souls. Now, I've already made an honest review and a spoiler-free beginner's guide tackling this very game, including its character creation, leveling up, exploration, combat, gear, and Dark Souls' online elements, such as humanity and PvP. For this video, I'll be focusing on every single tip and trick that I can give you so that you can play Dark Souls Remastered with the least common mistakes as possible. Without further ado, here are all the tips and tricks I've learned, gathered, thought of, and found online. If there's one tip that I can give you throughout this video, it would be to not hoard your souls for too long. There is absolutely no benefit to be had by hoarding it in your inventory. I guarantee you that you will lose that at some point or another and it's best to just use it when you get the chance, whether to level up, purchase items, or reinforcing your gear. Speaking of reinforcing your gear, you can reinforce your gear by talking to blacksmiths found around the world. To perform the upgrade, you'll need a gear you want to be upgraded and the specific material it requires to be upgraded. The most common ones are tight and shards, chunks, and slabs. There are multiple varieties of them scattered in the world, and each one of them reinforces your weapon differently depending on what kind you use. Some increase their base damage, and some add elemental damage. Just make sure you're using the right one. When building your character, I suggest you use a character build calculator, specifically designed for Dark Souls Remastered. It's easy to find one, and it's just one Google search away. You're going to die. It's just how it is. Even the most experienced players eventually mess up and die in the process. And there's nothing wrong with that. The sooner you accept that, the easier your experience will be. Play a few hours at a time when deemed necessary. The worst thing you could do to yourself is to play the game when you're angry, hungry, tilted, or worse, all of the above all at the same time. So just take a break, it's okay, you'll feel a lot better on your next playthrough. Use the lock-in mechanic. There are a lot of enemies in the game and you won't be always be what? And you won't always be in a one-on-one -on -one combat scenario. A good included mechanic that helps with this is the lock-in feature, which would help in focusing your attacks onto one enemy at a time. So, you know, use that. Don't rely on one defensive mechanic the whole game. Don't just dodge. Don't just roll. You can use both, and you'll find out that mixing up your combat style would help a ton in learning on what your enemies can and cannot do. Explore. Look around. The game world is huge, and not everything would be laid down for you to be picked up and found. So yeah, just go out and explore. Hit enemies from above. You'd be amazed on how much damage a downward attack can do to your opponents. You can even deal almost half of the boss's health as damage, which would help in making fights easier and shorter. Read those online messages. Around the map, you'll find messages written on the ground, made by players. Some are helpful and are genuinely there to help players. Some, not so much. I'm not advising you to do everything that the message says. What I'm saying is that you should read them so that you'll have a basic idea on what follows. You can and should upgrade the number of Estus flasks that you can use. The more Estus flasks you have, the more health you can recover. That makes sense, right? Talk to people, repeatedly if necessary. They will have some wise words to share with you and can even give you hints on how to push forward. Some sell items, some let you do other things. The key point in all of this is that the world of Dark Souls can be a very sad and desolate place. Talking to some of its occupants can be a good way to learn more about the lore and story. Balance both mobility and defense when choosing your armors. Having a decent amount of both is always better than having the best of one. Well, unless you're a glass cannon, or you want to be a walking tank. Keep a homeward bone with you at all times. This will teleport you to the last bonfire you visited and will help you get unstuck in a horrible situation. Which I do. A lot. Don't be afraid to summon friends for help. In fact, one of the first few boss battles you'll encounter would be too hard for new players. Luckily, there should be a summoning option right outside that specific boss battle. And just a quick tip on which boss I'm talking about. It's the one on the rooftop. Get the Drake Sword, it's a good starting weapon for the early to mid game and can be found and acquired from the tail of the first dragon you'll encounter. Now, how you'll get it? Well, I'll leave that to your imagination. Find the right weapon for you. Someone's ideal weapon might not be the weapon for you, and it's all about how we play. So again, I advise trying them all out before sticking to one. Keep a shield handy. It's always nice to have one available when you really need one, which is all the time. You can two-hand your weapon for more damage. Who knew? 
learn how to parry. I ain't gonna tell you how to parry. There should be a good tutorial at the beginning of the game. So as long as you're reading the tutorial right and you're doing all the things that it wants you to do, you'll be fine. Backstab enemies by circling around the enemy and attacking them from there. This will result in a powerful stabbing attack, which is always nice to have. Note that this doesn't always work on all enemies. Are you more into magic? That's fine, and if you are new, try out the Pyromancer class. It's a good starting class and it'll help you better understand how spells work in the game, including its advantages and disadvantages. Here's something you may not know, attune your spells. You have to attune and slot them in a bonfire before you can actually use them in combat. Just so you know. You'll also need a specific equipment to be able to use your spells. For sorcerers, you need a catalyst. For pyromancy, you'll need a pyromancy flame. For miracles, you'll need a talisman. Just equip them in combat and go nuts. Actually, don't do that. You're gonna run out of spells. This is neat. Go for the tail. If you encounter an enemy that has one, I recommend focusing on that part of the body first, as sometimes, if you cut it off, it'll give you a unique weapon only obtainable by removing certain enemies' tails. Although, it's usually a two-handed weapon though, so, you know, there's that. Early on in the game, you'll start to encounter enemies that poison you with just one hit alone. It might seem that there's no way to end it, and the only way to counter it is to not get hit in the first place. But that's false. To cure yourself of poison, you have to use a purple moss clump, easily purchased from the female undead merchant, the first merchant you'll encounter in the lower undead burg. The cursed status effect is also one of the more annoying statuses in the game. Being cursed turns you into stone and halves your health bar upon arrival. Arrival? Revival. The only way to fix this issue is to use a purging stone, again also sold by the female undead merchant found in the lower undead burg. A good way to find out if there are enemies that can cause the cursed status effect is the many statues around the surrounding area. If you encounter one, chances are there are more along the way. Don't kill NPCs. Yes, you can gain some unique equipment by doing this, but you'll also rob yourself of the story, their questline, and their rewards, assuming you can finish them in the first place. Now, these rewards are typically better than the gear you'll receive from killing them off from the start. So I think it's better to just do the quest line. That was a horrible transition. If it just kind of feels and looks off, hit it. You'll thank me later. Once you leave the tutorial area, you'll be dropped in a good starting position with three possible ways to move forward. The obvious one and the best one is past the well above the hill. That's the right one. Don't go to the graveyard and don't go under the shrine. That's an easy way to die. The tutorial area might seem extra difficult, but trust me, it's a good thing that you have an idea on what the game feels like now rather than later on. It actually does a really good job of being mysterious while at the same time teaching you the basic mechanics or controls of the game. Just read the messages on the ground and I'm sure you can get through it. The last tip I can give you is to read. Reading is a powerful skill both in-game and in the real world. If you can read, you can think, and if you can think, then you can defeat anyone who opposes your way. Read the description of items, description of abilities, skills, weapons, armors, rings, story sequences, lore. Read and listen. It's the best advice I could give. Dark Souls Remastered is a difficult game, and if you still have concerns if this is something you really want to play, then click on this video where I made an honest review on Dark Souls Remastered. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me, is Dark Souls your first Souls-like game? It was mine, and has always been my personal favorite.